Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about disk versus shell integration. And um, the basic concept uh, of disk integration, well, first of all, let's just talk generally about volume, right? If I have a rectangular box and I take this cross-sectional area and I multiply by the height, then I get the volume. And so this concept of area times some kind of thickness is the basic concept of integration, that we're going to take something maybe that varies, you know, so we take like a cone. Well, the cone can be thought of as being cut into slices. And again, like a Riemann sum where we're kind of approximating it, you know, we could approximate this as a disc sitting on top of another disc, sitting on top of another disc. And the finer we get these discs to be cut, the more accurate our estimation of the volume is going to be. These are, this is like a side sketch of basically a little cylinder disc. <clears throat> so in this way, you can see, I'm going I'm to use the cone as an example because it's actually a problem and it kind of helps us bridge the two pieces. So, um, you know, basically I need to sum up the volume of these disks and that's going to be my integral and the volume is going to be the area, which is pi r squared times the thickness. Now, if I have a situation where, you know, let's take a line. It's going through the origin here. So this could be like y equals, I don't know, 2x. So then the radius of these different, uh, and I'm rotating this about the, the y-axis, then the radius of these things is just the distance x. So my pi r squared becomes pi x squared. The thickness of each guy is going to go down to the infinitesimal value 2y, sorry, dy, which is a thickness, a very small amount of thickness in the y direction. Now, this is not an integral that I can do because I need to make sure that I'm um, you know, being consistent in terms of the variables that I have. So let's just say that I'm going up to, I don't know, um, three, six. So we're going up to the line y equals six. So then if I switch the integration over to dx, I just need to use this relationship as my uh, connector, dy equals two dx. So I'm gonna make a replacement here, and then I can set my limits of integration from zero to three. So I've got pi x squared times two dx. Take my constants out, two pi x squared dx. And now I'm on the road to glory here. Two pi times x cubed over three going from zero to three. So this is gonna be 27 thirds minus zero, so 27 thirds is nine, so this is 18 pi. So this cone, answer one, 18 pi is the volume. Now let's think about it in terms of our shell. So basically the shell formula takes this A times H concept and it just turns it on its side. So basically, if you think about a cylinder, the area of the surface of the cylinder, the lateral surface area, is just this distance, which is the circumference of the circle, times this distance. So that's an area. 
circumference times height. And then we're just gonna multiply that by the thickness of, again, an infinitesimal thickness going this way. So that's gonna be a dx thickness. Now, for any particular point here, my height is going to depend on the top and bottom curve. And this is where we come up with this formula. So the circumference at any point is going to be the two pi x term. And the height is going to be my f of x minus g of x. So here, f of x is y equals six, g of x is y equals two x. So I have two pi x, six minus two x. And then my, my uh, derivative, my, um, what the heck is that called? The partial is dx. And so this sets up my integration. And again, I'm going from zero to three. So I should find something similar when I finish this all up. This looks, it looks different. So let's see what happens. 12 pi x minus four pi x squared dx. So I'm gonna integrate this up. Uh, this is from zero to three. So 12 pi x is 12 pi x squared over two minus four pi x cubed over three. I'm going from zero to three. So again, the zeros are gonna fall out here and this is gonna be, well, this can be simplified out to six pi times nine minus, and then again, I got the 27 thirds, 27 thirds is nine, so minus 36 pi. So I've got 54 pi minus 36 pi, and bada boom, bada bing, got myself 18 pi. Now, I don't know which one of those seems more sensible to you. I mean, certainly this integral is a much easier integral than this one. I mean, this isn't that complicated. They're both powers. It's just, there's more pieces to this, but the shell comes into its own when, um, you know, we have something where it's not easy for us to kind of envision the disks, right? So I think there's a good example of that. Um, let's just come up with another problem here. Let's say that um, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it around, no oh crap. The y-axis, oh man, just, wait a minute. I know, I'll use a line, aha. Yes, okay. So I'm gonna make up something, let's say this is uh, y equals the square root of x. And let's say this is, um, oh, I don't know, nine, three. And then this one is going to be, um, y equals one third x. Okay, so on the top, I've got my y equals the square root of x. On the bottom, I've got y equals one third x. And I wanna rotate this around this line. Well, you know, this is kind of a weird flowery tulip shape. Um, it's a little hard to imagine the, the disks here because of the gap in the center. Um, so, you know, right off the bat, it's it's going to give me something as I look at this sort of cross section that's more of a, a ring situation instead of a disc situation. So I have to kind of think about doing one minus the other, right? Like I, I really need to visualize this as this guy with these discs and then I'm gonna subtract out this guy and I'm gonna do these disks. And so, you know, I can, I can set that up and I should end up getting the same answer both ways. Let's see, 
uh, how it works. All right. All right, so again, using the disk idea, and again, I'm gonna have to use subtraction here, but I basically have a disk where um, I've got my dy, and that my dy is gonna be different here because one of them is gonna be based on this and one of them is gonna be based on this. But I've got my dy multiplied by my thickness, which is um, x, so, I got my pi x squared times dy. In the case of this straight line, dy is just one third dx. But in the case of this one, it's actually one half and then x to the minus one half dx. So that makes it more complicated. So now I have one half pi, let's see, x squared, and I get x to the minus a half, so it's x to the three halves uh, dx. Okay, so, and I'm going from zero to nine, so that's kind of the same here. So now I just have to crunch it out. I'm not saying this is going to be a problem on the test. I'm just, I just made up something and I'm going to pay the price for it. Okay, so this guy is pi over three, x cubed over three. This guy is um, going to the five halves, so two fifths times one half pi x to the five halves. And then I'm going from zero to nine. Ooh, okay, so uh, ooh, this is bigger numbers. All right, so I got nine cubed over nine, so that's gonna be nine squared. Mm, that's gonna be simplified a little bit. I've got one fifth pi, and then I got nine to the five halves. So I'm gonna take the square root of nine, that's uh, three to the fifth power. And the zeros are gonna knock everything out. So I got 81 pi minus, uh, three to the fifth was at 343 fifths pi. All right, so there's my answer, whatever that is. This is 405 fifths, uh, 62 fifths. Somebody check me out on that. Okay, so this is the disk method and I'm using the disk method to make rings. I took the outer ring, which was the basic cone and then I subtracted out this inner disk and that leaves me with these, this part rotated around. Now let's see if this circumference idea is any easier. So basically, all I need is my radius, which is still two pi x, because wherever I am, the radius of this thing as I spin it around is gonna be two pi x. Then I just have f of x minus g of x, and in this case, it's the square root of x minus one third x. So let's plug it in and, and take a look. It already feels a heck of a lot easier because I had to, I didn't have to kind of visualize a lot of stuff about which one was the outer and the inner ring. So square root of x minus one third x dx, integrating that. <clears throat> of course, I wanna distribute. So I've got two pi x to the three halves minus two pi thirds x squared. Which, you know, I mean, it's a little bit different. I'm just looking at, I'm just comparing these two and thinking, hmm, it's the same, what's different? Um, I don't know, I guess we'll find out. So, and this is going from zero to nine. <clears throat> So let's see, uh, okay, so take the two pi out. So this is x to the five halves and I got the two fifths. So this is four fifths pi x to the five halves minus two pi ninths x cubed. And I'm going from zero to nine. 
doesn't feel like it's going to turn out to be the same thing. Okay, so then I plug in nine and I got again um, five halves, x to the five halves. I think that's 343. So four fifths pi times 343 minus, and then nine to the third power. But again, I got a nine canceling on the bottom. So it's going to be two pi times 81. All right, so um, 340, okay, and I'm about to run out of brain power to do this mentally. Um, 1260, 172. Oh, you guys like seeing me squirm. Uh, 1372 fifths minus 162. So, of course, I need to scale that up. Uh, 500, 800, uh, 810 fifths yeah 810 fifths uh, pi well, no, seems all right so um 1372 fifths minus 810 fifths equals 562 562 fifths pi all right well those are definitely not the same thing um, did I make any obvious mistakes? Okay, well, turns out I don't know my powers of three very well. That should have been 243. And it turns out if you do 243, then it all works out. You end up with 32.4 pi, which is uh, 162 fifths pi. 162 fifths pi, both ways. So disc shell, it doesn't really matter which one you do. If in the problems that are on the test, the bank of questions, it's on the last test question, um, it does force you to write it in shell format. If you want to write it in disk format and then you put that on your scrap paper and, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it wrong because to me, it's not as important that you can do one particular thing than that you have a way to kind of think through the problem that makes sense to you. So hope that helps and I'll talk to you later. Let me know if you have more questions.